Welcome to part one of our introduction to dependency injection. In this episode, we will begin by defining what dependency injection is, and then we'll demonstrate a problem that dependency injection can solve. And then we'll finish up by discussing why strong dependencies make programs rigid and inflexible. And then in the next episode, part two, we'll begin to look at how we can remove these dependencies using various forms of dependency injection. So let's begin with a definition of dependency injection. A class that depends on property components gets instances of those components at runtime from some other class or service. When those properties are based on abstractions, for example, interfaces, well then families of those components become interchangeable, resulting in much greater flexibility. We'll see there are different ways of doing dependency injection. There's manual techniques and there's automation techniques. But we'll begin by examining a problem where dependency injection could provide a solution resulting in greater flexibility. In this first example, we'll explore a simple messaging application. Here, we see a class named GUI message input. It has a single method, get message, and it uses a JOption pane input dialog to retrieve the message from the user. Our second class is called console message output. It's a class that outputs a message to the console. Our third class is called message service. Now the message service class uses both the GUI message input and the console message output as delegate components that do the actual work. So when we ask the message service to display a message, it first gets the message from the input component, and it then outputs the message using the output component. And as you can see here, we have two properties representing these components, and both properties are hardwired to instances of those classes. This is a very rigid, inflexible way to develop software. And whether you instantiate the components on the property line, on the property declaration line, or whether you instantiate them in a constructor doesn't really matter. Either way, you have a hard, a concrete class dependent on two other concrete classes. And this makes the program very inflexible because if you wanted to change to some other type of input or output, you would need to edit the source code. So let's see how this works. We've got a startup class here with a main method. We instantiate an instance of the service object, and we ask the service object to display the message. And remember, the actual work of getting input and output is encapsulated away inside of this display message method. So now when we run this, we'll see that we get a dialog box asking us for some input. And when we click OK, the input will be sent to the console. And there's our output. 